Hey guys, it's Natalie. Welcome back to Cows Online. And today we're going to do a little art lesson. Um, I have acrylic paints and today you're going to see me paint a little sunset mountain range like this one. I think this would be fun to do as a family. You could do one big one all together or just see what every person can come up with. Um, I'm using acrylic paints, but feel free to use whatever you have available. Markers, crayons, colored pencils, whatever you like, whatever you want. Um, as for colors, I have, please forgive the paper plate. I just reuse mine over and over because I don't like to be wasteful. So forgive the mess of the past. Uh, for colors though, I have white, a couple shades of blue, pink, yellow, orange, and purple for our sky, and of course black for our mountains. Just stick that to the side here. And I am painting on a small canvas. It's probably about the size of a business card. Feel free to, again, just paint what you have. These you can buy at Walmart, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, um, Amazon even. You can buy them in bulk there. They're about a dollar a piece normally. Um, but if you have paper or you want to paint on a much larger scale, go for it. This is your piece of work, and this is just something to do for fun while we're at home. So I'll move that to the side here. So we're going to start off with our brushes. I do have some water and a cup here off to the side, along with a paper towel to kind of dab it. I have two brushes I'll be using. One is a thicker brush, a little bit bigger. Um, it will help me with my sky and with our water and, and to even with the black too, just to kind of help with the big stuff. My smaller brush is for the fine details like our clouds and the white on the mountains, like to make our ridges and the white in the water. So I set that aside. First we're gonna get started with our sky. So I'm gonna start with white. And when you're dealing with white, when like you pull from it, pull from the edge because I wouldn't want to dunk a color and then dunk right in the middle. Just instantly get it all contaminated. So let's start pulling it from the edge. And we'll pull a little bit of yellow. And we're going to find our horizon line, which is probably about the middle. Maybe a little bit lower than the middle. And I'm going to make my yellow thicker than you would think. Just because our mountains are going to cover up some of the yellow. And I want, I want to be able to see it. And it doesn't matter if it's perfectly straight because mountains are going to cover it up. So it's pretty forgiving. All right, next I'm going to pull a little bit more white again and some orange. My orange is dark. It's like a burnt orange. So that's one reason why I'm pulling white into it. If you have something that's lighter or brighter, that is more your cup of tea, perfect. Then you probably don't even need white. I'm gonna rough that up, make sure to get all the pores of the canvas are covered. And then I'm gonna pull some pink. And I'm not even rinsing my brush yet because these three colors are amazing to blend with. I don't want straight lines. Right now we kind of have yellow, orange, pink. Now let's kind of blend those together a little bit. Let's bring some of this pink down here. From the edges. Just kind of smoothing it down a little bit. Maybe grab some of the orange, bring it up top. We add a little bit back of the yellow. Then we grab some of this yellow and add it back up here. Make it a little bit lighter. As you see, any painting's different, and this is really your thing. So if you like, I don't really like orange, you can just add pink. That's fine. Or vice versa. If you don't really want pink, you can do more orange or more yellow. I'm going to rinse it off a little bit. Add 
And now we're going to go into our purple. Make that come down just a little bit on the edges. Mm, just smooth that out. And you can leave it smooth like that, even. It's kind of kind of have a nice fade. Um, I'm going to bring that pink up a little bit. The trick about blending is not to go over it too many times. Because you'll end up with just one color. And I don't want one color. I want to be able to see a little bit of both the pink and the purple. Mm, kind of like that. And I've done this with markers before too, and I've and it's pretty much almost the exact same way. Same with crayons too. Um, but if you'd like me to do samples of them, just let me know in the comments below. Uh, next up is our water. So I'm gonna rotate this a little bit. I've got teal and I've got this darker blue. Let's start with our darker, kind of like a base coat. And we're just gonna paint that right in. Be considerate with your brush strokes, especially on the water, just because you don't really see water in vertical or horizon, except unless it's like a waterfall or a fountain. <laughs> so it looks a little weird when your brush strokes are going vertical like that instead of horizontal. And we don't even need to go all the way to the edges because they're going to be black. Um, I'm going to pull a little bit of this teal color, do a few strokes here and there with that. Maybe a little bit of white, just so we have some contrast of different shades of blues. And I like to mix what's called wet on wet. I'll mix on the canvas. And so feel free if you want to make a perfect shade of blue on the side on whatever palette you're using. But I I just like to just roll with it and mix it onto the canvas as I play and as I paint. Next up is our mountains. All right, so I'm going to switch brushes to our tiny round one. If you haven't used it yet, let's put it in a little water just to kind of activate those bristles. If your paint, like your black paint, has dried a little, um, it's nice to add just the tiniest bit of water. So I'm going to add a little bit of water to the edge of this. And just sort of mix it in. It gets it a little bit inkier. A little bit smoother to kind of play with. And I'm going to roll it and pull away a little bit. I do that to help me get a nice point on the end. All right, so mountains are basically rough triangles. So let's make some happy little triangles. And we 
want different sizes because nature is not cookie cutter. It's not all the same. I'm just going to make that one like a big one. It's going to go off on the side. And now we just fill it in black once we got our side, our, our shape. I hope you all are having fun painting this. Or maybe you just like to watch art videos. I do. I'm very guilty about that on Instagram especially. Either way, I hope you're enjoying it no matter what it's for. I, I've just switched to my bigger brush just to kind of more for speed and with filling in the black. If you feel more comfortable with your smaller brush to fill this, the black part in, fill in the mountains, that is fine. But I feel like once I now have it chiseled out, I can switch to the bigger one just to sort of speed up the process. And as you see, I move my canvas around. It's not glued down, so... You can only turn your hands in a certain angle. So do what feels comfortable. Like I said, it's not bolted or glued down. I think people tend to forget that. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna come in and kind of make our water. Just come in at the end. And fill that part black. Do the same on the other side. We don't want any straight lines. And if you even if you do have a little bit of a straight line, we'll rough it up here in a second. top part again we're just kind of making sort of a little squiggle rough land lines <laughs> all right so since my black paint is still wet like I'm not gonna reload I'm actually taking some of the paint off here on the side and I'm gonna push what's wet out into the water so I have my brush at this angle I'm just going to push that out and make like little feathering. Like see how it kind of feathers on the edges there? So we're just basically recreating that. Let's see, let's, might need a little bit of black. Acrylic paint does dry really fast. Like my sky, yeah, it's totally dry already. So we'll tackle the clouds next. So we're just adding a little bit of black. Again, I'm keeping it at this side. I'm just kind of making, trying to make little thin lines. I'm just roughing up the edges. And if you go and you're like, oh man, I have added way too much black, it's fine. Let it dry, paint over it. That's the one good thing about acrylic paints. They're pretty forgiving. Oops, excuse me. Bumped my, my phone mount. <laughs> Alright, so switching back to my thinner, smaller brush. We are going to tackle the clouds. 
So we're going to switch back to our white paint and rotate over here. All right, so clouds are basically little sky mountains. That's kind of how my best interpretation of them are. They're basically little rough triangles, and the very bottom of the cloud is pretty much straightish. It's straight in the fact that we won't have a triangle on top and on bottom, but it's going to be not perfectly straight, as in like this cardboard line is straight, because that I've never seen a cloud like that. <laughs> If you have, awesome. I would love you to send me a picture of it. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna make a big cloud here to the right, and we're gonna make a couple little triangles. One bigger and one little tiny one. And I'm moving my brush in this sort of small circular motion. Kind of like I go one way and then when I hit another corner I go the other way just going kind of back and forth between that whatever feels natural honestly um, sometimes I like to make my clouds a little bit thicker in paint just to add an extra element to make it like sit a little higher than maybe everything else on the canvas and I always like to add a little taper like just like it's tapering off on the edges it's just a little wispy and a couple little dots like a little piece is broken off and just hanging out over there And we're just gonna add a little bit more and that's almost a little too straight for my taste on the bottom so I'm gonna push some paint here and push put some out there yeah all right so I it's nice to add a little bit of color into our clouds so think about what color your cloud is sitting on like mine is sitting on more of the pink area than the orange or anything else so I'm going to add a little bit of pink into my cloud. Just swirl a little bit in it. Now if you want, again, to mix on the side, you can. I just like to mix it right on there. And I like that I have a couple of different tones of pink, some dark, some light. I'm going to go back and add some white on top of this so it's not too bold, but just a nice little hint of it. You can also do like little dots, like your like pointillism, a little bit of poking it with your brush versus just the little swirl motion. Cool. So now I'm gonna add a few extra little wisps to the side. Now if you think that is fine, like you don't wanna add any more, then don't. But I'm gonna add just a touch, kinda like there's some little clouds floating behind it. I'm trying to be careful not to touch my black paint because I don't want to smudge it. There we go. So now we have like some little clouds and things around it. So next step is we're going to make another one. We're going to make another cloud to the left for our purple area. So again, we're going to go in the white. And we're going to have to be careful with this one because we're going to make it smaller. It's easy to make things big, but it's hard to go smaller, no matter what size. So even if you're working on a canvas that's two feet versus two inches, you know, once you make a big one, 
you know, it's kind of hard to go down. So if you want to start with a smaller one and, and then go back and wash the bigger one, totally understand. But granted, even if you mess up, you can always just do go a little bigger. So we're going to make a little triangle. Also, you can just paint over it. That's what I love about acrylics. You mess up, just paint over it. That's fine. So we're just going to taper off a little bit. There we go. And this one's more in our purple area. At least to me it is, so we're gonna add purple. I'm gonna mix a little white on the side too, because my purple is pretty dark. If you don't have purple at home, feel free to use like a dark blue or even do black up in the sky. That's fine too. So just like we did with the pink. Go back and in it. Now, if you're working with markers on this or watercolors, watercolors are really hard to paint over. I recommend actually cutting out a new piece of paper and like draw a cloud on the side and then cut out on a white piece of paper. Just make like a paper cloud. Just because one, that's a cool element and then makes it mixed media. And then, two, it also will raise it above and just kind of give it a shadow look. And that's just kind of neat, too. All right, so we have a little purple in this cloud. And now we're going to add some little dots and dashes around it. Kind of like little pieces are coming off of the cloud. Or maybe there's something behind it. Put a little dash right here. Just like a little cloud just hanging out right over there. There we go. Alright, next up is our mountains. So, we're just staying with the white. I'm twisting it. Kind of like what we did with the black. So I'm going to try to get a point. If you're working with a different brush, another way is to push your brush down and kind of go back and forth with it. So I push it, slide it over, and do the same on the other side. Back and forth. That gives me more of a chiseled point, almost like a screwdriver. I want, just because it's what I'm used to, it's what I know, I'm just, I want more of a point like a pin on mine. So I'm twisting it like that when I'm pulling my paint. Cool. All right. So remember, mountains are triangles and our ridges grow along the edges. So we don't want any horizontal lines or anything like that in our white. We want to just go along where it would naturally be. Oh, apparently I dipped my brush my finger in the orange paint. So see, here we are. Mistakes happen. It's just part of life. And I'm just taking a little black paint and I'm just going to cover that over. There we go. If you do have a mistake on your painting, please just ask a question of how to fix it in the comments below. I'd be happy to try to help you or answer it or tell you a good way to paint over it or something. Alright, so back to our white. Before we're so rudely interrupted by that orange. <laughs> How dare you, orange. Alright, let's flip it here. Now, try to keep a light hand because we want thin strokes, thin lines. And just little dots and dashes. I 
kind of like that. And this is where you can decide if you want a mountain in front of the others. Like, I am going to put this mountain actually in front. Anyways, I'm going to put this one in front. Which means I'm going to put a line right here and let it go down. Like that. And now, so this one automatically already looks like it's farther away. And so now we're going to add our lines to here. And that little one already kind of automatically looks like it's behind. So we're just going to... There we go. And put just a couple of dots. Because it, it is teeny tiny. We only need a little detail. Not much. Alright, and then add one to here. Say this one actually cuts in front of those. And this one actually, this one's gonna be front and center. I think that's pretty good for my mountains. Let's say there's some parts you don't really like. Like I see a couple of lines for me that look a little thick. Let me show you how to fix those. So we're going to dip back into our black real quick. Get a little bit of black. And we're just going to kind of shave off a little bit of the white. So like this line's a little thick for me. So we're just going to cover it up a little bit with black. Same with right here. Put it right there. There. Just kind of little touch ups here and there. There we go. All right, next up is our white, which is the reflections in the water. So I've rinsed it off because I don't want gray. <laughs> I'm going to do white. So again, we want to try to get a really nice point on our white. And this is probably the most important part of the water and the fact that it's like the icing on the cake. So we want it to be as straight as possible. We don't want any diagonals or anything super crazy. Just keep it simple and fun, um, which means we want to have some varieties of, you know, thicknesses and thins, some different lengths. And for me, it's easier to draw straight downward versus horizontal. Don't know why, but that's just how I roll. Um, so go whatever's best for you again. So we're just going back and adding some little lines. Just like little bends in the water, little waves. And if you have a spot that doesn't look so good or it's maybe a little too thin, too thin, whichever, 
Again, you just paint over it, whether it be blue in the water or black on the edges. I think that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, next up is our little stars in the sky. And so I'm going to get back out my bigger brush, make sure it's rinsed because I think I have black still on it. Cool. Alright, I'm going to mix a little bit of water into the edge of my white paint. I'm going to get my handy dandy notebook because I wanna, don't want to get paint splatter everywhere. I'm even going to brush some of this paint off because I don't want too much on there. A, a drier brush is actually best. Okay, so I'm going to use my notebook to kind of help block, make sure paint go, doesn't go everywhere to the side. And I'm going to aim for my sky. And I'm going to hold my thumb to the edge and just flick a little bit. So I have some shooting stars in mind. I kind of like it. Let's say you have a spot that you don't. So my sky is still, you know, it's dry. If you have a spot you don't like, like I don't like that blob right there. I'm going to get water on my brush. I'm going to dab it. I'm swirling it. And I'm going to take my paper towel. And... Boom, just dot it away. Kind of like these, not super crazy about those. And this mainly works when your paint is still kind of wet. So these are already drying because they dry pretty fast. And I'm just gonna dab it with my brush. With my paper towel. Alright, so I kind of like that. And I kind of like everything else that's going on. So, if you are working with a much larger scale canvas of any kind um, and you want some more prominent stars, I recommend using the back end of your brush. And you just dot it in the white paint and then you just can make. And depending on how much pressure you use, you can make a larger one or maybe a couple smaller ones. You're going to want some, some variety. Um, but since mine's so small, I'm going to actually use my the point of my brush. I'm just going to get a little bit of paint on the tip. And I like to pick places that already have a star, a spot, just because, you know, it's splatter paint, so it's already naturally just splattered. So um, humans want to make things very symmetrical, very OCD. <laughs> so be careful of that. So I'm going to pick spots that already are there and those kind of bold in them. I like to always sometimes pick some right on the edge just so it kind of helps the look that it's continuing on to the side.
happened, everybody. Our happy little mountain range and water and happy little stars and clouds. Um, if you have any questions, again, feel free to put them in the comments below. I'll try to answer them as best as I can. If you have any suggestions of what you'd like to see me paint next, again, just comment below.